All right, so uh, it's time for round three, everybody here at the World Series of Sealed. Uh, when we began, we had all players even at 1,000 gold pieces uh, for each party. However, now the, ch the playing field has changed a lot, and we're going to redraft. Uh, however, given the circumstances that VLPS and uh, Zelay were playing against each other in that riveting best of three, uh, we don't have much time for Trump to redraft. He's supposed to redraft during that series. Uh, so as such, we're just going to watch Trump draft. Yeah, and sure. See, just just kind of go along with it. You guys get to, to follow along with us, and we get to commentate it. Yeah. I think before, while he was drafting, he was uh, when he was drafting his first set, he was singing as well, I heard. So... Uh, oh, it's too bad we didn't capture the audio. Yeah, well, actually, he's right down here at the corner. If I move my head, you oh, can see you Trump up oh, right there. You can see maybe if you can zoom in, he might be singing. So now let's see, let's see if what, what he's drafting here. All right, so the classic uh, set still very powerful. Trump nodding along. All right, seeing so like, ah, I got some interesting cards. Mm -hmm. Nothing uh, too ground shattering. Three Blessing of Kings. Uh, hasn't picked a up a legendary yet, I don't think, unless I missed it and looked away for a second. Okay. Air rate's not bad. Kill commands. He's got two Novas again. <laughs> Maybe that's a sign. <laughs> Three Novas. Three I, don't, Novas. I don't know if he wants to fall in that tra Well, I don't, don't want to call it a trap, because Priest can be really strong. Oh. Sea Giant's a pretty good card. Yeah. So I've seen him pick up a couple of good <laughs> Paladin Master comments. Master over Spark. Tink Master over Spark is not really that impactful legendary, but it still can be used. Mm -hmm. Especially if you play like a Paladin. Yeah. You can hero power turn two. I think I told you this play a long time ago. I used to put Tink Master over Spark in my mid-range Paladin all the time. Uh, post change, post nerf. Uh, and uh, you, you turn two hero power, and then you turn three, you turn your hero power into a 5-5 five, five Devil Sword. Yeah, but what if it lands on your opponent's minion and plays nah, the Devil Sword? Nah, that doesn't happen. Okay. Okay. Mad Scientist, Death Bite, Two Death Lords. I mean, Axe Ramus is a, pa a series of packs where you often get more than two copies of stuff. Yeah. That's why we see a lot of the decks are, are themed. Bulvar 4 Dragon. Oh, man. Trump's getting the most useless legendaries. Yeah. He does have Avenge and Argent right. Protector. <laughs> okay. I he mean, he still can definitely build a reasonable Paladin deck. Implosion's mm -hmm. a good card and Dark Bomb. Well, you know what? Some pretty good tools here. Like, again, it's not about the flashy legendaries. It's a lot about the base of what you have. Two Dark Bombs. Yeah, it seems like... I really like Warlock now. Yeah, also Mage. He, he's picked up quite a few cards for Mage. E even just Mech Synergies along with Snow Chuggers. And he's picked up, uh, like, a Blizzard. So he's got some AoE spells for Mage as well. And a Flame Waker. So uh, Mage and Warlock leaning, leaning towards right now. Nefarian. The Farian is an interesting card because it does feel like a nice bomb to play late game, but what, what class really benefits from playing Nefarian? Not really any. Yeah, not really that many. So it's a little bit clunky, but it is a really good threat. Maybe Druid could get away with Nefarian because of ramp. Yeah, I suppose. Farian Rin. Oh, man. Daddy Rin. Can Trump find a way to make all this work? I, the only classes that really jumped out at me were the two we said, but you, you can get away with just making two strong decks. Um, he might feel like he wants to make a warrior, especially since it seemed like Trump leaned towards warrior in his last draft because he found Dragon Synergy and decided to, to throw that in a, two in a warrior deck. Three and tombs and a Cuber of Voldemort. Those are... Uh, the Cuber of Voldemort is pretty good for the Paladin deck. And what was that? Six wobbling runs? <laughs> Brand Bronzebeard! All right, there it is. Some cool stuff. Oh, fourth and tomb. Yeah. Second keeper of Oldman as well. Seven wobbling runs. Six, eight wobbling runs. Is that really eight wobbling runs? I think so. I don't know. Maybe a little bit less. All right, Trump. You got thirty minutes. S thirty minutes and two seconds. They give yeah, you a little bit of leeway. Yeah, we a little buffer. So yeah, you yeah. Just click on the deck. Yeah. So he's just okay. So there's a couple of ways you can go about seal strategy. One of them is this, which I think is called. Um, I don't actually have a name for it, so I'm just gonna call it strata stratifying. Like what you do is you eventually build what you what you, you you pick every class, and you pick cards which you think are playable in general. Yeah. And then you just weigh what is good versus what is bad. Yeah. It's interesting that he didn't pick explosive trap. 
but I, I think he just kind of like glossed over it. Maybe explosive's not that good. Yeah, but when you start seeing a class that has actual shape to it, because you start looking at the neutrals after you build every class, and yeah. you're like, okay, maybe I can do this. Yeah, and this is how the players that played in that the Red Bull team brawl, where uh, they actually had another sealed form, and this is sort of the strategy that they. Uh, came up with and with the team it's a little bit harder actually because you have a lot of people with differing opinions so you can spend five minutes you know arguing over which class you think has the best class cards especially if you have three people with a strong opinion so uh, this does usually end up being the fastest way and sometimes you can just say you can just eyeball and say ah priest doesn't have any so you can just delete the priest deck right off the bat but uh, he does have a, a quite a, some good cards so he doesn't want to uh, get rid of it right away Okay, well, uh, the Priest looked like it had some promise in the early openings, but after looking at it more, it didn't look that great. Rogue, uh, it's got Blade Flurry, which is cool, but nothing too special. Oh, Shaman man. doesn't have Fire Elemental. It's got Hex and Elemental. He just, <laughs> he yeah. just skipped Shaman. <laughs> yeah. Warlock, though. Let's talk about Warlock. He's got Dark Bomb, Hellfire, Implosion, Void Walkers. Like, if he wants to play a Zoo-esque approach... Even, like, you know, Raynad found use for Fell Cannon, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe... Yeah. Ooh, Dread yeah, Infernal. It's not, it's not the worst. Yeah. Warrior, Deathbite, Corcoran, Varian, Ren. Can you find a way to, to use it? it Obsidian look like Destroyer could be really good with Varian, Ren, but he's only, he only has one of those. It is a common, but he only has one. Uh, I did have four bashes total, so... Uh, all right, you got to search for some wobbling runs here. <laughs> Mimron's head, the mechs. Is he actually going for mechs because he has the Iron Sensei? Oh, jeez. Not the junk bot. Not the Mimron's head. I mean, Mimron's head is actually the only viable deck A I've five? ever seen it in. What? I thought there were eight. The only viable Mimron's head deck I've ever seen was in a Conceal Rogue. You played Mimron's head, and then you'd Conceal. Ah, well... Did you say it's the only viable one? <laughs> is that, have you seen is Mimron's, that one even viable? Have you seen? Have you ever seen uh, Mimron's head play any other deck successfully? Uh, That's not like oh, an unstable portal onto this. I've never seen it played successfully ever. No. Uh, yeah. I pulled it off like once or twice before. Yeah. And it's always been through like conceal or something. Yeah. So Paladin's got okay cards. Mage has got decent cards. He doesn't have, like, a Goblin Blast Mage, which really makes what the mech synergies work. Mm -hmm. What's his, like, what are some of his better neutral cards, too? I think Trump has to go through. He's got Brand Bronze Beard. Hey, I, there wasn't any neutral cards that really stood out. We talked about Nefarian, but that wasn't great. Uh, Azure Drake's usually pretty good. He can't even play. He doesn't have um, Blackwing Corruptor to make dragons work. Yeah. Otherwise, he could play Nefarian, Azure Drake, Twilight Guardian. It's a little bit awkward, but he still might go for a dragon-esque approach. Scientists and secrets. Oh, man. He, he only has effigy and ice block, so he can't tempo mage it either. Has his two secrets. I mean, in the end, we're just using existing archetypes that we know from constructed to apply. Yeah. But the truth is, Trump has also played a lot of arena. So he's probably used to situations like this where he has to awkwardly use cards even though he doesn't feel like it's very powerful. Yeah, and if we learn from the past, if you think about back to Cloud9 at the Red Bull Team Brawl, they they tried to uh, make decks that resembled constructed decks. Um, at least a few of them did, and they sort of fell flat on their face uh, because, of course, they're, they're not going to be nearly as good as their you know, fully constructed counterparts. Um, so they, they would forego curve to try and fit in cards that they thought would, would do well, and it didn't work out, so... Uh, sometimes it's not good to focus on what you think is good and constructed, but you know, look at the cards in relation to you know the what you have to work with. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, the warlock deck you can be pretty. You can you can play it pretty good value. I mean, implosion's a great card. Dark bomb's pretty good. Um, if you want to play a zoo esque style, you certainly can. What does early dream drops does he have though? Arch Dire Wolf Squire, Alpha. Dire Wolf yeah. Alpha. We're gonna infiltrate her. He might as well put the brand bronze beard in this. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Huh. Brand bronze beard and Elven Archer. You no, know, with Arjun Horse Rider and the the Worgen, I guess he didn't have enough uh, hu good hunter cards, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe Bram Bronsbury's not the best. I saw the Elven Archer, and I got a little bit, little bit excited. But there's really only two battle cards in the entire deck. And there's not a lot of synergies across the dragon battle cards either. Normally yeah. you have things like the uh, the Twilight Guardian gaining additional attack. But yeah. I'm not sure if it's that impactful. I'm surprised he hasn't found a home for the Azure Drake yet. I feel like that would fit really well into his mage deck. But it looks like he sort of scrapped that. It, it feels like he's in on the Warlock and the Rogue deck. And the, the mage is sort of his... What is it? Tertiary? Yep. His third deck. Back up. I mean, that yeah. is a good strategy to just try to load up two decks that are very powerful. Yeah. He's got some decent value cards. Azure Drake, Argent Commander, Sea Giant's good. Does he have any other token-esque cards? Murloc Tidehunter's not bad. That's about it. Oh, uh, well, I mean, if you're going to play Sea Giants, you want to be playing things that have net net value on the board for, like, making Sea Giant cheaper. Play Dragon Egg. Does but he, uh, did he have Haunted Creeper? Did you put that in already? I don't think so. I don't think he even opened a Haunted Creeper. No, he almost certainly did. I'm willing to bet my kingdom. Your kingdom? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I thought you said kidney. But where? Oh, wait. That is technically part of my kingdom. He, he put it in his rogue deck. His Haunted Creeper is uh, in his. Oh, okay, okay. Creeper makes sense with Sea Giants. Yeah. <laughs> kind of anything can happen. I mean, he's kind of evaluating if he can do. Uh, some kind of paladin build. It doesn't look very reliable, though. No choose over champions, no consecrations, no cards that really, like, make paladin a threat of, uh, like, value and mid-game presence. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with the seal tool, he basically just saved two of his decks. So that pretty much means, like, the rogue deck and the, uh... Are he... Did he save them? Oh, no, he was deleting other no, decks. No, deleting them. Okay. So mage does... I mean, even the Frost Nova has his plays. Yeah. Yeah, now he's he's settled on the mage deck. I think this makes sense. I mean, we both said mage and mage and warlock look like the decks that he was uh, l opening. You know, the strongest cards. But again, the Azure Drake feels like it goes so well. Yeah, Azure Drake goes pretty well in mage. Uh, I, even hmm. Mad Bomber sometimes goes well in mage because you can use the ping to pick off whatever comes off uh, comes out. Um, Mad Bomber also excels in decks that can't utilize uh, that can't utilize the hero power to do damage like. Hunter and stuff helps you pick off things. Yeah, I like the Frostwolf War Warleader t Warlord too because you have implosions. You've got Echoing Ooze. That seems like it fits into the Warlock deck. Oh, now he's got to find 15, 16 cards to <laughs> finish his Mage deck with. It's tough. Well, the Mage can so he, he can Battle Cries. He can draw off Azure Drake. He can. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's about it. He can, oh, no mission venter. You can draw twice off of. Mad Scientist pulls a nice block. Eh. <laughs> Wobbling Runs isn't bad with Sea Giant either. I think, I, I, I think I'd rather like, like, I like that kind of approach. It is slow, which is ultimately what makes it really weird. But Wobbling Runs isn't too bad. If summons three two twos, that, that might be an amazing swing on board. Yeah. But he only has one Giants, I guess. Yeah, but your, your opponent could just ignore it. But I mean, if you're playing Frost with Warlord, you're playing a lot of cards that benefit off of a bigger board. Then, then all of a sudden, your deck starts coming together a little bit more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like Scientist and the, and the only deck that can play Secrets. <laughs> He's only playing one Secret too, because his second Secret is Ice Block. So he doesn't really want to take up a spot yeah. in his deck. He he might end up throwing it in there. What just if he? Because what he if he has? Anymore. What if he has Ice Block and the Ethereal Arcanist? That card keeps growing as long as the Secrets is up, and Ice Block won't pop. So. You can just have that. That's, just, that's probably too situational. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a thought, though. Yeah, you can just kill off the Ethereal Arcanist as well. Well, it becomes a 5-5 five, five for 4. Yeah, I suppose. And then 7-7 seven, seven the next turn. Did he have that card? Yeah, okay. he had one of them. It's, it's certainly worth evaluating. I do like making Rogue Mech. I think Iron Sensei is, a, is one of those big snowball-y cards similar to Cavaldi Raider or Floating Watcher. Yeah. Just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and you're like, what the heck, I can't stop this. Yeah. That rogue deck's really interesting. It's a low curve. It does have some sort of burst finisher with uh, Blade Flurry, uh, Tinker Sharp Soil, and also both Cold Bloods. Uh, it tops out at Beltray, and it, it, it does have a lot of sticky minions because of the Unearthed Raptor. It can target the Nerubian Egg. It can target the oh. Haunted Creeper. Even, like, Clockwork Gnome can give it some additional value if you can't find anything else to place it on the board. Two Gs. Whoa. All right. 
Sure. I don't mind that. Yeah. He's just going to be dumping his hand, but his, his, his curve is a little bit high for Jeeves to have a lot of impact. Yeah. Sometimes you're stuck holding, like, a five-mana card, and you want to play Jeeves. Well, the deck looks good right now. Just needs spells. He barely has any spells. He has no, like, targeted spells except for Forgotten Torch and poly Polymorph Board. No Flame mm. Cannon or Frost Bolt or Fireball. No sort of on-demand removal. Uh, Wolf Rider is kind of like Frost Bolt. <laughs> Not really. I mean, it just you can have it as, as removal pieces. Yeah. If you're really desperate for mid-game minions, you can play like Gubarashi Berserker because Mage can ping it. Yeah. I mean, he's got some. He's got some things to work with here. Nothing amazing, though. Even Sunwalker is pretty good. Yeah, he goes ahead and puts one in along with an Arjun Commander, but he still has nine cards left. Yeah, he has to play a more value-centric mage that wins in the long game. Yeah, because he has Blizzard. I would even suggest putting in Frost Nova because he wants to stall the game out. Yeah, even though Frost Nova is not a good individual value, it's like sometimes you need to stall a little bit longer. Yeah. I remember one time Tides was playing Sealed with me. Uh, oh, sorry, was with uh, with all of us. Mm -hmm. And he made, like, the jankiest mage deck of all time. His entire win condition was Shades of Naxxramas and a bajillion freezes. And he somehow won. <laughs> like, he just kept playing Shade of Naxxramas, freeze the board, free Frost Nova, Frost Nova, Cold to Cold, Blizzard, yeah. Blizzard. It's like, what? Like, two Ice Lances. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's so janky. Sometimes that's won. one of the hardest things about Sealed is finding the win condition of your deck. Because um, when you're in those tight matchups, you sort of need to play to your out. S similar, to, similarly to what Firebat did uh, in the Rogue match mm -hmm. earlier, uh, he realized that he was out of burn completely. He was out of cards, so he had to start playing a little bit of board control. Where earlier in the game, he was going completely face. So mm -hmm. uh, he knew his deck, he knew what his win condition was, and, and switched it up. So that was smart of Tides to do that. Yeah, and it's one of those things where a lot of times the way you evaluate decks can fluctuate based off the variance. Mm -hmm. So you're like, well, this is like a, like in Arena, for example. Oh, this is a 12-win deck. Easy. And then you go 0-3. Or not even, like, maybe you go, like, 2-3 and three instead. Yeah. And then you're like, well, this deck probably gets 4 or 5 wins, and it goes, like, 9 to 10 wins. Yeah. Sometimes things can over-underperform. Uh, and a lot of times expectation gets readjusted as you start understanding how your deck comes together. Yeah. Well, he's searching for mechs. And he's uh, just sort of pivoted here for the... Uh, rogue deck to, okay. to more mechs. Looks like he's uh, coming down to some important decisions. Uh, we just got word that Strifeco finished his decks. We can take a look at it, see how things are shaping up for Strifeco. This is uh, Strifeco's list. Don't get confused. We're not fast forwarding to Trump's. Uh, Strifeco has gone with the Shaman Warlock Paladin setup. Yeah, and keep in mind these are the redrafts. Uh, so all players uh, had to redraft. It wasn't a choice. Uh, now that we are in round three, uh, the Whoa. players are redrafting to see. And these look like some pretty powerful decks uh, just based off firsthand. I think the players are starting to realize which decks are the strongest. That Shaman deck in particular seems like it's ra rather potent. It's interesting because he's going in a few different directions with the Shaman deck, but I think the most important thing is that it tops out at five, so it's his most aggressive deck by curve. Yeah. And then you have the Warlock deck, which seems to... Just play a very mid-range style, I guess. It's mm -hmm. it's got cards that can run away with the game, like a floating watcher or like a buff draconoid crusher. Um, but it also has like you know void terror, which might just get out of control if you can't answer it. Yeah. He's even got like dragonhawk rider in the warlock deck. It's it's really weird. My what? Oh okay. That dragonhawk rider is the yeah. three mana three three that if you inspire it, it gets wind fury. Wind fury. And uh, if he has power overwhelming off his dark peddler, it's been been cool. Yeah. And the Paladin deck is um, decent. It's got a lot of the commons. So Shield of Minibots, Seal of Champions, those strong commons. Oh, man. Seen it. Wait, that is, is that insane. A, oh, I saw the three secrets early on. No, he, he's got... And then I looked at... I was uh, like, is there a Mysterious Challenger? And then I yeah, didn't see one. Likely. But, but the, uh, the Blessing of Kings and Seal of Champions with the early game board play like that is can be really strong. And Argent Lance is not to be slept on. If it becomes a, a three-charge weapon, uh, even a two-charge weapon can be really impactful to swing the board. Also, uh, I love that Shrifeco is finding cards like Cobalt Guardian and Ginny of Zephyrs to find value. Cobalt yeah. Guardian 
with mini bot and uh, clockwork no might end up getting some value. Yeah, with force tank max. It could divine yeah. shield mech deck, and genie of zephyrs as well. Um, basically, just with uh, seal of champions, blessing of kings. I think those are the only two yeah. that I see. That's I still really is. like this paladin deck. I think it yeah. might be the sh one of the strongest decks we've seen today so far. Yeah. Nice job, Strife Crow. Nice job. He and he's a chip leader. Keep in mind, Strife Crow right now. He's yeah. got over two thousand uh, gold. In his in his purse right now, so uh, he's got a lot of room to maneuver. So he can put funny. most players all in at this stage, and, and you know if he wins a couple more, he he might be able to knock out some players and potentially secure a spot in the top two. So basically, what's going to happen from this point is we're going to play with these decks until we're left with two players. Um, and now that the ante is pretty high, I, th I believe it's going to be 450. I can get confirmation in a moment. Um, players are going to start to to be eliminated left and right. And uh, then when we're left with the final two, they will redraft again for the final match. And uh, we'll, we'll be left with the winner. Yeah, I, I think Shrivecrow just offloaded a bunch of stuff to his Warlock deck. Like, eh, it's okay, I Like the guess. double Ice Rager? You're thinking he just offloaded the double Ice Rager? Yeah, two oh, Ice man. Ragers in the Warlock deck makes me think he's kind of trolling. But... It's got it's because he's got he's got some pretty good cards in there like Argent Commander, Stampeding Kodo, Imp Gang Boss. Yeah, I, uh, that, I mean, I'm assuming that I'm talking about cards that could probably go to other decks. Oh, okay, okay. But you know, outside of that and like the Yeti and Flame Juggler, you can't. Uh, they don't really fit in too many other decks. I would yeah. probably say that Strifeco created his Paladin deck. It's like this is really good. I don't want to mess with anything more because all those cards synergize. With in a, some capacity, yeah, you could probably argue like Murloc Knight could be replaced with something else, but I think it's still really good. Yeah, and then uh, Shaman also has like a pretty decent amount of synergy. Like you don't want to play Stampede and Kodo in the Shaman deck because it's very aggressive. Yeah, early on, so I, I think I like it. I think I like how Strifeco approached it. He's saying I'm gonna really push for Shaman and the Paladin. And the Shaman is just sort of chock full of class cards. Uh, that's where its strength lies there. Um, no hex, but he's got power mace, fellow spirit, lightning storm, fire guard destroyer is also another powerful. Yeah, uh, no class fire card. Ellie, but that's that's okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's uh, Strife Crow, who Trump will be playing against. Strife Crow checking in with him. Uh, looks like he's good to go. Trump, in the meantime, has he made any further development? Looks like he has moved the creeper to the warlock deck. <laughs> that's that's right, all he's rightfully done. Rightfully so. I would have been a little yeah. bit chapped if he didn't. Yeah. And uh, we saw right before we went over to look at Strife Crow's decks, he sort of pivoted the rogue to be more of a mech rogue uh, instead of, uh, like, with mech and death rattle. He still has some death rattles in there, but um, he, he just added a few more mechs, made it a little bit more consistent. And now we can see he's just rounding off this mage just a little bit. And you can see he's, he's sort of stretching here. Matter Bomber was added in. Silent Knight, Hungry Dragon. Oh, he can play uh, Clockwork Gnome and get the spare part for Flame Waker. Yeah, he can also play Brand Bronzebeard and Matter Bomber. Did he play already the Clockwork Gnomes in the Rogue deck for Iron Sensei? I think so, which means that's an extra Clockwork Gnome. Yeah. I, I, I would really like to see it in the Mage deck if you have the Flame Waker. Yeah. Just the consistency of one drop and then also yeah. being able to have that spare part in your hand to combo later with Flame Waker. If he wants to make it real late game centric though, maybe he doesn't want to have early game plays like that. He wants to be able to draw into like higher value stuff. Yeah. He is the mayor of value down. So I, fe I feel like Trump would probably f consider that before putting it in his deck or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rogue. Oh wow. Still needs a little bit of juice. I'm surprised he took out the flurry. He gutted it. Yeah, he took out the Flurry when he has Auto Barber uh, and an Oil. Those are two cards that you can And two leverage. Buccaneers also is... And two Buccaneers, you're right. No Flurry. Okay, so he's putting the Clockwork Gnome in the Warlock deck because he wants more one-drop consistency. That's also fair. Yeah, I think... Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> he, he, he didn't have any in the uh, Rogue Mech deck, so he yeah. ends up putting it there. He's basically... Trump is deciding right now, since, since these games are best of three, you basically... Um, you, you want to have two sort of main decks and then a third deck where uh, it's either got a very specific win condition or it's got specific tech cards um, that you use to counter one type of deck. Like maybe all of your weapon removal 
and maybe a mage deck that's wild mental snow chuggers and weapon removal for weapon classes huh. something like that but it's it's usually the, your third deck you, you're not going to play very often so we're, he's trying to figure out where he wants to allocate his resources which decks he wants to give the most love to i would go for the well okay I, i'm looking at some of the cards here in the mage and like if you're not going to be specializing the mage is one of your main decks it feels like a waste to put uh, Azure Drake in it. Yeah. I like Warlock. I think it's got some good stuff in it. Um, Rogue is also pretty decent, but Mech Rogue is always iffy. Because it can, it can draw... Like, the Rogue's hero power is such an interesting dynamic because sometimes you have so many things that, that pushes it forward, but then you just draw a lot of situational stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've seen, like, Buccaneers, Cogmaster, Pit Snake, and then it's just like oil and you're like well i don't really do anything and i just get my board wiped over and i lose board control yeah he even has demolisher in it that's how much trump wants the the mech synergies well if demolisher can get buffed by iron sensei then that thing's annoying i think it can get really tough to remove and can do a lot of damage OP. it is and it is like OP. mini rag <laughs> yes a very mini rag that can attack that can attack and Still has 32 cards in this Warlock deck, so needs to trim it down a little bit. Take Master Overspark in the Warlock deck, by the way. Lots of tokens to be able to spawn a... Potentially spawn a 5-5. Five five. Okay, so... well, okay, Very interesting. He has the Dread Infernal, which seems a little bit... Suspect for all of his tokens. Yeah. You play the demon rat. Oh, sorry. Um, it's like it's kind of like the implosion, and then you can't really play Dread Inferno. <laughs> He's banking on the fact that he'll be able to yeah. buff his 1-1 one, one up to a 5-5 five, five with a Tinkmaster Overspark before he plays Dread Inferno. I'd rather, instead of Dread Inferno, play the Frostwolf Warlord. Yeah. Because you have so many tokens with Tawny Creeper, Echoing Ooze, um... That kind of stuff. Or does he have another card that benefits off of it? Like, like uh, not Die Wolf Alpha type stuff, but something else like that. He does have a Die Wolf like, Alpha like sometimes I've seen people put Raid Leader in, and that's not even. It, it sounds stupid because Raid Leader is just beyond terrible sometimes. Yeah, but, but it's like when you have such a tokenist approach, sometimes it works out. Yeah, and Mukla's you know, Champions okay in a deck like that. I I played a lot of Arena in the past where Raid Leader was you know probably one of the the most valuable cards like in, in one of my decks. That's yeah, so... Nasty. Um, I, yeah, I think Trump work. does have a Mookless Champion, right? He could have put that in his Warlock deck. Uh, we I know Strifecrow had a Mookless Champion. Oh, right, right, in right. In his right, Paladin right. deck. Okay, uh, I, but, must, I must have misremembered. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure if he, he might have one, but I don't know if it fits. Maybe it might fit in the Warlock deck since, of course, he is doing that sort of flood strategy. But uh, as far as... Okay. Him having a deck, I don't think so. Okay, Trump is heavily considered running Tink Master Overspark and Silent Knight for the Wombo Combo. The Wombo <laughs> Combo. Well, you could use Worgen. Okay, realistically, you could Worgen Infiltrator and then Tink Master Overspark. That's actually a legitimate, a legitimate combo. Yeah. Um. So. Still curious. I, I do like a couple of choices. Like, an interesting choice here is uh, Tiny Knight of Evil, and I think it's because he just wants a 3-2. Yeah, other than that, the only other 3-2 that he has is an Acidic Swamp Ooze, which... Because Tiny Knight of Evil, he also has a Fist of Jaraxxus, so there is actually synergy there. If you, like, Fist of Jaraxxus discard, um, and you can discard it with, like, Soul Fire, which he doesn't have. I guess he... Does he have a d Dark Peddler? No, he doesn't. What? Oh, that's pretty bad luck then for Trump to not open up a Dark Peddler. Yeah, it's common. Yeah. And said he got five wobbling runs. I was hoping for him to have some kind of discard. Okay, so there's no uh, there's no discard synergy there. Never mind. Yeah, Silent Knife seems a little bit weird. Uh, I, I'm still also... I'm still also a little bit interested that he's not um, considering Death Lord. Death Lord's a really nice card to secure, but I guess where does it really fit? <laughs> You're just taking out the Tink Master. What's better, the Tink Master Overspark or the, uh, the Silent Lord. Knight? No, Silent Knight. Well, I think Death Lord, what's really good is that... Um, I guess it could be a stylistic thing. A lot of people have been burned by Death Lord too many times. And they yeah. feel like it's just... Yeah. yeah. Well, he's just finishing up his mage deck here. 
And uh, while uh, Trump finishes up he, here, he also has a bluegill warrior. That's also a card that you can use. Like, there's a lot of like situations as removal. So, yeah, he still yeah. doesn't want to play Blade Flurry. I think Trump's plan is I'm never going to hero power really. I'm just gonna like if I hero power, it's gonna be one time to use with Goblin Auto Barber or like a Sarp Sword Oil, and then just kind of build board, build board, build board, build board. Yeah. But other than that, he doesn't have like a way to. If he loses the board, how does he come back? There's just no. Okay, I. I mean, he's. It's just. It's so interesting that he's choosing not to run Blade Flurry, which is like one of Rogue's best cards. People look at like cards that you realistically want to nerf from Rogue in terms of just sheer power level. Preparation, one of them. Uh, backstabs, another. No, no, no. But, but then you look at like Blade Flurry and how it's. It's just insanely strong. But Dan, if you got Blade Flurry in your Rogue deck, how do you fit in your ship's cannon? <laughs> But, you know, he's got, he's got Buccaneer and stuff. And uh, does he have the South Seed Zach hand? Yeah. Oh, he doesn't. I think it's just Buccaneer. Just Buccaneer is the only pirate? Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Over Blade Flurry. I think, well, I mean, it is a two mana 2-3. Two, and one of the things that Rogue often does is just hero power on turn two. But you have Mech Warper, Auto Barber, Bloodfin Raptor, Micro Machine. And I think one more of the two drop. I guess he was just kind of filling out the curve. Like I said, Trump's playing the rogue, not like a rogue deck, but more like uh, a mech board flood t tempo deck. Yeah, and the mage deck's actually coming along quite nicely. Uh, the mage deck, yeah. it, it lacked a, the early game sort of removal, but what he lacks in that early game removal, he makes up for with a lot of, you know, just good late game stuff. Uh, double Ethereal Conjurer, he's got Blizzard, uh, he's got a lot of cycle for that late game as well, plus some bombs. So as long as he manages to make the early game, which Mad Scientist, Unstable Portal, a couple of 3-2s in his 2-drops, Forgotten Torch as well, he can make it through that early game, then he's going to be sitting pretty moving to the late one. You can see Trump right now is grooming the mage deck the least out of, out of all three. So he's, it seems like he's the happiest with it. What's that card to the left of Felkin? I guess we can't see it. Yeah. Because um, I feel like there's some tools that also could be utilized here. Is he playing? Yeah, like Frost Nova is not too bad if he wants to stall out onto the board. Arcane Explosion also has relevance because you have Flame Waker and Azure Drake and Violet Teacher. Like, Arcane Explosion does have that relevance to impact the board. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's, it's also a two damage AoE with that Azure Drake, which is like a consecration, but sure. for two mana. Yeah. Assuming you had the spell power on the board. I, yeah. I like Arcane Explosion. It's underrated in this format. Especially in a uh, slower mage deck like this one. Mm -hmm. uh, when sometimes you just need to be able to do yeah. one extra damage early game when you wouldn't have a two mana play otherwise. So, Oh, he put the Frost Warlord, Warlord in. Good job. I like that. I like that a lot. I've been pushing for it for like You found minutes. it. You've been pushing for it for 28 and a half <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I know. I feel like I'm beating, uh, I feel like I'm beating a dead dread steed. <laughs> so this, this rogue deck has shaped up to be a mech. Yeah, I actually mech. do like a lot of the rogue deck of what Trump's done. The only thing is um, I do feel like Blade Flurry can fit in here. I also feel like um, the, uh, the Demolisher is a little bit over the top because yeah. it, the, the tempo is a little bit odd with Demolisher because sometimes it never gets a chance to attack and you're developing a 1-4 mm -hmm. and then your opponent just kills it and yeah. then it doesn't do anything. So it's like one of those things where like sometimes you search a little bit too deep to try to find mech synergy and then... Yeah. You just, like, remove yourself from playing good cards. Yeah, so Trump's running out of time here. It looks like he has his three decks just about complete. Last just minute. looking through his cards to make sure that there's nothing, not one single powerful card that he might have left out. Uh, but oh. I like the way his three decks have, have sh sort of shaped up here. Yeah, Faces Manipulator, a pretty decent card of value that he's not putting into any of his decks. I don't know if it fits in anything. It definitely doesn't fit in Rogue. Warlock is iffy because of all the tokens and stuff. And then, of course, uh, Mage would be the only deck Faces Manipulator fits in. But yeah. It's, uh, I guess he feels like he already has enough good five drops. He had Nathero Conjure and Azure Drake and other things like that. Yeah.